Hi, Lucy. Hello, how are you? I'm good, darling. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You're wearing black. We've had so much colour and we have so many ladies out there who also wear a tremendous amount of black. So I thought I would dress address the elephant in the room. I was just going to share with you how I wear black because um, for me it's about how can I bring black to life. This is a work in progress with you and I because I've just put a lot of stuff on the rail and then we'll go through it. But can we start first with last week's challenge for you, Lucy, when we did loungewear was to see your interpretation of loungewear. So are you ready to show us? I didn't have anything. So I basically just got on my pajamas. <laughs> More importantly, let's look at that hairstyle. Oh, yes. That is very 1940s. So satin, red lip and that hairstyle. A lot of women do wear black, and you even mentioned it this morning when you're talking to all of the um, women on your lives all over the world, that um, where was it you said in um, one particular place where they do wear a lot of black? Melbourne. 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 It's, I mean, any person watching now from Australia will know that there's a classic thing that, let, you know, Melbourne ladies wear a lot of black. Whenever I've been there, I've always experienced a bit of rain. And I think when weather is bad, and I probably, you know, made over women around like 20 countries around the world, Lucy, I notice where weather is bad, women wear more black. Yeah. Although, you always say, yes. wear black when you're feeling your best. I'm feeling good today. Black does equal chic. You know, so sometimes when you look at a black and white picture, the, the woman might have been wearing a, a brightly coloured ball gown, but we look back and we see those pictures and we think how chic. Yes. So I want to look at the chic elements of the benefit of black. I do love a bit of black, I have to admit. You do, don't you? When do you wear yes. it, Lucy, the most? Until you pointed it out, it is de you're definitely right that it's when you feel your best. It's when you feel like... If I've got a day where I've got a, like a lot of meetings or an important meeting, I might just wear black because I just want to feel, it's like quite empowering sometimes. Yep. And you dress up, put on maybe a red lip, do your makeup really well. And it's just, I, I feel a power. You feel a power. Wearing. Okay, yeah. let's, let's harness and address that power because there is definitely something in that. I think there's a different kind of power you wear when you wear bright color compared yeah. to when you wear black. So yes. bright colour is a very inviting power. It's a, it's a empowering the people around you kind of power. Mm -hmm. I think black empowers you to be strong and gives you that sense of strength in front of maybe the unknowns of a day. I noticed in my sort of black and white that I have a lot of actual black and white together. And I find that always chic, either in, in checks or in spots or in a pattern. So I, I did notice that. This is everything in my wardrobe that is that combination. I've got a little bit more black than this, but the fundamentals are here. You know, I notice when I buy black jackets, I always, I quite like something on them. They're not generally just black. The other thing is jewelry. If you look down on the floor, you know, I notice that sort of adding that texture with different jewelry is really important. And footwear, as we come into the spring, think of white and metallic silver. It could be your metallic is gold. And then handbags. I notice I do a lot of, I like black and white in my handbags. If I dissect what I'm wearing now, the cut is everything. So this is my perfect black jacket. It's a Zara black jacket. It's a little tuxedo jacket. It's of a length that I can wear it with different things and it works. So a skinnier trouser, a wide leg trouser, a crop trouser. It's got a narrow sleeve and it has room for me to have some white popping out the end. This outfit will be my outfit that you mentioned about wanting that powerful day look because I think the trainer adds the freshness, the femininity of the trouser with the wide legness of the trouser and the way that there's black with a bit of white, there's black with a bit of white, there's black with a bit of white. I just love that combination. One thing that I love about our office at Twenty London is that I can wear a suit to work and there is something I think even more empowering about putting a trainer on because it says I'm a woman on the go. Yeah. I've got time for heels. And it takes you know? it from classic to 
to a little bit street and sometimes the smarter you are unless it's like you're going to court or you're a lawyer or you're in an incredibly formal environment you need something to give yourself that sense i am an ageless woman it's that c continual flow which is flattering because as yeah. soon as you break yourself up you do something different to it it's a sort of different look the top is a little bit more blouson you're not seeing that shape a lot of clothes dressing is about where do you want to show off most your sense of shape and i'm very comfortable to show it off here okay yeah. should we show you something totally different please do all righty so lucy this is one of my favorite black and white looks for the summer predominantly white but it's the hint of black that makes it chic this is a zara oldie oldie but goodie you know sometimes you have to adapt clothes to make them work so the thing about this is it's all in one stretchy and it came with a belt and the belt if you do it like this, it's really thin, and I could do that in the middle, but there's something, you know how I feel about ties. I would either take it round and then try and do it up at the back, but still it's a very thin amount of black, and I want to replicate the width of the black that's on the jacket. I'm just gonna put that round the back, so nobody's ever gonna see it. And I'm just gonna take this belt from Zara, I'm gonna do it backwards. You have gotta get the right width when you do belts. Stretchy belts to me give you waists where you might not have them. And then I've got the black lapel and it's just so much sharper when the black is thick. It looks like it's meant to be. We talk a bit, Lucy, about getting, making sure that the buttons of jackets are always at the waistband of what you're wearing underneath. Yeah. This is a very classic example. We're now getting into technical finite detail. But it's a very classic example of why it's such a flattering thing to do because if this jacket was longer and went to here you you it would lose proportion or if it was higher and then that was there you know it would change the shape yeah it's so cool i'm so glad you changed the belt yeah and then if i wanted to kind of up the ante with this but do you remember that old necklace Yes. I was thinking, I haven't worn it for years, would I wear it? Or do we just like it being all clean? So I might be going out for dinner, and I could add that on for dinner, because it just actually ups the ante. So it yeah. takes it from a very clean day look to something kind of quite chic, evening-y, and I've got something to play with. When I wear predominantly white, Lucy, um, I wear red lip more than when I wear black. So that's yeah. taken it from day to night with just a necklace and a yeah. bit of a lip. I might just cut this off now because I'm never going to wear it like this. <laughs> it's never going to be used, so let's get rid of it. So much better. Freeing! All right, I'm going to take off the lip and show you something else. This is really unusual for me, Lucy, and you wouldn't see me in this often, which is fitted and fitted. The only reason I bought this shirt is that I, it has a white collar and I need that near my face. And I loved at the back that it's sheer. Yeah. And then I'm taking that jacket, which has the little white fits to it but there's something I kind of think is perennially chic of the sort of the Diamante with the Diamante. Yeah you look chic, it's very Trini Whittle founder. I probably would be more comfortable to do a flare but because um, you know I've been quite healthy in the last month that we've been staying safely at home I kind of I'm liking this now I'm feeling you know my butt's not on the floor I could show it but just, it's all the extremities are white. So um, I don't think I have anything in my wardrobe which is just black. I now want to go a little bit into the kind of, you know, print and how you mix black and white prints together. This is another way, Lucy, I love to wear black and white, which is um, dog tooth. Oh, lovely. It's that half tuck again, because if it was all tucked in, I just feel it's, loses the stylishness so I really like this if you have a funny tummy it softens the tummy it brings the pattern and the block together and I think that's important as with anything whenever I'm wearing black and white it's about the cut so this is a again bloody Zara shirt sorry um <laughs> just is but I love the little detail there of the little um pleating yeah um I like the pockets I like the fabric, it's very nice fabric. So, so it feels smart and chic and I've changed up and I'm just doing a white trainer now. I just wanna show you now the different ways you can do the prints together. Hounds, tooth, prints or whales, check. But it's like, can you mix these checks together? And I think that what's interesting is the base of this check 
is creamy and the base of this as a as a print is white right. so it makes this look a bit dirty yeah. so i would not do these two together this is hound's tooth with dog's tooth what's the difference well we just looked it up together let's be honest <laughs> because i never ever know but basically dog tooth is smaller hound tooth is bigger so i kind of like that i mean it just gives more texture and the yeah. jacket, which for some people as a purchase might seem a little bold and strong, with this underneath, it sort of softens the impact of how striking that jacket is and maybe too stand outy for you. There's such a lovely confidence in seeing those two together. Would you change your makeup? I would. I think I need. Do you remember when I wore this before? I wore a bright lip. I mean, I could do some mama, but I feel the check is quite strong on me and I've faded. The mama which is our red sheer shimmer just puts me back into play like that and then i'll put a little bit too much probably as always on my cheeks it just needs something so the print's not wearing me i'm wearing the print yeah Tony, yeah. would you wear the, the shirt and the jacket with a white trouser i could wear it with white easily but i think it looks sharper with the black i think that the hound tooth is such a bold print if it was on white it's suddenly just like blah this is why i don't wear black on its own lucy and black against skin it just it just my whole energy goes <laughs> i always believe that 25 percent of people can wear black without any makeup and look amazing 25 percent of people need makeup to wear black 25 percent of people need quite a lot of makeup to wear black and 25 percent of people should never wear black if i wear entirely black i just i'm drained and I, and I just have to do a lot of makeup and then i feel over made up and then i feel it ages me and and i just don't it doesn't work but yeah. the thing is the shape was beautiful of this dress so there's a couple of things i can do lucy do a little fake collar like that Oh, I love these. That's from Cos. Um, yeah, it's from Cos. And I can just put that on. So already to me, there's just a little bit of life around the top. So I could leave it like that, or I could do a few different things. I could take this old belt. I could take this old belt, which is a very old DVF belt. And I could just put it around the middle. But I think the colour's a bit wrong. I think it's too big. I could <clears throat> take a slimmer white belt. I just think you have to be very careful when you do a big belt, how close that collar is to that, and is it fighting? I'm hearing you in my head already saying that the buckle is square and that the collar has round shape to it. So bloody true. I'm learning so much. You are learning so much. So that's gonna come off. Right. But what might work on it, a row of oh. pearls, but just that, giving something to it which which gives more accentuation to the shape in the middle so it's kind of giving you that sense more of a waist but it's not breaking up the dress if you have a plain black dress how can you bring it into something else daytime it up put a shirt underneath it um put it with a pair of trainers put a long necklace on it that kind of stuff even can you wear white over black oh I would, but this is cream. But okay. I could do this if it was white. But, oh, I know what I would do with this. <laughs> oh my God, I know what I would do with this. Hello? There you go. See, just got it. This might be too nun-like for a lot of people because I do get comments on Instagram, Lucy, about my nun-ability. <laughs> the concept of wearing white over black, I think you can. I think it can be really chic. It's something that I've only started doing in the last five years. I used to not do it. It's so difficult to wear this jacket and I love this jacket. But this jacket, I can't bend my arms in. But we're just gonna look at it because it might make me too bulky, but it's just, if it works with this, it's an old, old Balenciaga. And it's got this leather little bit. Wow. And it's got this interesting bit at the top where that usually if i wear a white shirt it like it gives you that kind of interesting neckline and you don't yeah. realize that it is the sort of satin of the jacket but then what i would do is this but i would do like a ring i'd do a cool ring 
Oh, nice. You know, there's another jacket that I love and I haven't worn for years and it won't go with this because it's kind of blues on with blues on, but I just need to put it on because it's, <gasps> it's how to me a kimono should be done. There's an art to how Japanese women manage to do volume top and bottom in the most chic way. Mm -hmm. They really do. Where is that from? This is from a designer called Kinder, Kinder Agachik, and he designed for lots of designers, including sort of Versace, and then he did his own label. And a few of those coats I have that you like are, are him, but it is just, I mean, looking at it like this, I'm not gonna say no to this as an idea. I love it. The sleeves are to die for. So this is about my idea of a black jumper. I have one from Joseph and one from Zara. But it's black with metallic, which makes it grey, but means I can wear it with black. This is my wearing head to toe black in a way, because the skirt is black, but it's with metallic running through it. Over it, I will put on good old metallic. So black and metallic for me is like a marriage made in heaven. I just feel so comfortable. I feel it's me in an outfit. It's got the black, but it's got the structure. Everything. When you wear a long skirt and a jacket on top, you really want to have a jacket that has a waist. Yeah. As soon as you have that fit there, mm -hmm. it just gives you the shape you need. I have to end with the classic Parisian chic, which is a sort of Breton, this time in black and white, with a red lip. I'm wearing Sweeney. That to me is like easy chic. Timeless. Yeah. With the cropped ankle, I really like it because I want the white trainer to be clean, one tiny bit of skin because it's a springtime look. I love the high waistedness. I think that's what gives it the chic. I think if it was sort of like, you know, this, it turns it into something else. So how you decide to disguise your tummy can sometimes take away all the shape you might have. I would do that with, you know, would I do that with a, with a, dog tooth. I think I might actually. Let's just try this for the first time ever. For sure. Both have the same whiteness in the background. Both are black. A little bit of pearl. It's it's just great. Um, Where are the trousers from? The trousers are Celine. Let's okay. name check a different brand. And the trainers are Russell and Bromley, my favourites. You know, inspiration that if you want to get out of black, and let's say you only wear black, Lucy, Consider what makeup you use, consider introducing different texture, consider introducing white accents, consider introducing white trainers, white cuffs, strings of pearls. Black equals to many women's sophistication. Tired black is really aging. Fresh, sharply cut black is fantastic. So let's say you have a really tired, you know, you have a tired jacket. Go and buy a fresh new one that's going to um, have a nice cut. This was 59 quid um, last year. But, you know, consider going to your wardrobe and, and seeing how fresh is my black looking. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's so useful. There's something amazing about a stripe. So what's our challenge to ladies this week? So what I'd love you to do is those people who have really just worn black and they haven't gravitated towards our wear some colour, think how you can introduce sharp elements to make your black wearing fresh. Is that our challenge, Lucy? Yeah, it sounds good. And it's, it's achievable. It's achievable. Exactly. <laughs> A bientôt! <laughs> A bientôt! A bientôt.